CEO of EF Resistance, a student of Grandmaster Anthony Muhammad, student of BSK Jiu Jitsu. I'm here in Brooklyn, New York, where everything started for our system of Sanukis Rude, students of Dr. Moses Powell, Grand Professor V. Sophie Rosal Davis, and I'm here with Shihan Christopher Muhammad, Smooth Muhammad, um, and Grandmaster Bill McLeod's dojo. I stopped training for a while. I focused on weights and crime escalating every day and uh, murder in our country. I decided, you know what, I need to tighten up. I need to get things back together. So I can stay humble, stay ready, stay disciplined. So that's what I'm working with, y'all. Rusty, so journey with me, get myself back together. I'm going to be hitting many dojos, many dojos. This is the first one. Let's said something uh, about being able to have the spirit of your teacher or be able to love the art and love right. the father. How did you say that? Because that well, resonated. Well, basically, well, basically um, what it was in conversations with Dr. Moses Powell, he would say some things like, you know, everybody loves this art, but, you know, there, there's very few that can actually acquire the art. And what I found in being around him is that it's very easy to acquire Sanukis when you have a love for what Sanukis is, what it represented, and who it came from. So just having a genuine love, myself, what I found, just having a genuine love for Dr. Moses Powell allow you, allowed you to see more of the truth of exactly what he was trying to give you. Cause like you could see the, you could see the passion, you could see the pain. You know, the technique was like the surface mm. and everybody pretty much views the technique. But as far as the internal aspect of ex actually what's going on inside that man, um, and how he came up with the formulas. You know, I used to say that Sanukis is actually the way Doc got to, to and from home. You know what wow. I mean? That's how Doc got home. It's like, how would you get home? You might call it something else. How Dr. Moses Power would get home is Sanukis Rule Jiu Jitsu. At the time, truth be told, those that knew, knew that there was knowledge all over. And um, he had started something way back in the day with him and the other few brothers whereby they had combined like seven systems of martial arts. I believe at the time it was called like the angelic system of martial arts. Wow. One, of the, one of the brothers is still around that I'm very um, familiar with family-wise. Um, Grandmaster Dan McKeady. Um, he's head of the um, Soke Ship Council. I believe he's down in Maryland or, or DC area. Um, he's still around. But Dr. Moses Powell was a part of that legacy. And so I was thinking, you know, because we're in front of where Wind Worlds Collide Dojo, the legendary dojo is, I know it would only be right if I could get some of that energy, <laughs> some of that technique, some of that energy for one who was there since the beginning. I got to get some energy. Yes. What's up? So, Energy doesn't isn't destroyed. Don't let me move. So it has to go somewhere. I want you to remember how you felt before I started doing this. Don't let me move. There you go. Now. See, you don't even want to let go. Okay. <laughs> I just cheered you up. My energy has to go somewhere. You know? Wherever the mind goes, energy goes. I saw. Um, Grandmaster Anthony is one of the primar premier reasons why Dr. Moses Powell came back to New York. Dr. Mm -hmm. Moses Powell had left, and I believe, I don't know exactly when he left, but I know that he came back right before when Worlds Collide opened up. And one of the um, reasons I believe is um, 
we as white belts at the time underneath Grandmaster Anthony, I, I believe it was about seven of us. Um, like my name was Osei Sanukis, you had Ahmad Sanukis, um, Aquil Sanukis, Jay Sanukis. I mean, it was a crew of us. We were all about the same age. We were all about 18, 19. And he would take us, he took us to this one tournament as white belts. And I remember doing rollouts, flying, they would call our names for the rings. And we would fly from one ring to the next. And the judges, because they never seen this before, they started getting agitated. Like, what are they doing? They're just all over them. Like, we just look like bees, like just jumping. <laughs> and the thing about that day with Grandmaster Anthony is, he walked in in a sweatsuit. We, I think we drove a van or something, or we went down in the cars. And when we got to, I believe it was Delaware, when we got to Delaware, the division for grand champion, for the division for Kata for black belts was up. So as, I, as he walked through the door, he was like, they was like, yo, yo, your division is up. And he was like, oh man. He was like, oh say, hold my bag, blah, blah, blah. No gi. No gi. No gi. No gi. Walked out, if I may, walked out. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Walk. He walked out, he stopped, he turned, he took two steps, and he did a one fist handstand. Came down in a rollout, mm. rock empty, mm. to grand champion. In a jogging suit. To grand champion. So now we as white belts, we hype. <laughs> Our teacher just came in the, in the door, no gi. These guys been in there stretching, straight out the van, Got onto it. the floor, grand champion. A lot of people get caught up in styles. Right. And say one style is better than another style. That's what everyone's still, a lot of people are still talking right. about that. I don't believe in that. Right. But if you can say that there's something that distinguishes. Well, what it, what it is is not, um, when you have form and function, or when you know how to um, optimize your body, you know, the greatest points of, you know, how you can get the best out of yourself. And, um, you know, he talked about being in alignment. What happens is, no matter what style you pick up, it's going to work for you or you're gonna make it work. Um, styles are what they are. An individual is who he is. If you give a warrior a knife, he's gonna to go to work. Us. Whether they had prior training in Patika Turka or they had prior training in Sanukis, he's gonna to go to work. Us. And that's just off the spirit of, um, you know, how God made us. It's the person, it's not the art. Cause I can take somebody and put them in Aikido and then take another person and put them in my keto. You're, gonna, you're always going to have two different, you know what I mean? That's but a warrior is going to be a warrior, man. So uh, All due to your training. Like, you, you, you know, you, you walk in the dojo, especially a Sanukis dojo. We used to have a thing whereby if you, if you look too relaxed, you were getting attacked. You know, they used to have a little funny game whereby. They, but, uh, yeah. And I mean, it was, it was all a part of training. Like, you couldn't get caught laying on the mat. I don't care how tired you was, laying down on the mat was, like, forbidden. You would get stepped, like somebody would lose, utilize you as a part of their, um, their current technique. Like, they, you know, they'll walk by and they'll work their stomping techniques, you know, until you got yourself up on your feet. Was one of the biggest things that you got, lessons you got, or guidance you got from Grandmaster? Because Grandmaster in my life... Oh, Grandmaster Anthony? Yes, has been like, he's been like a father to me, like, mm -hmm. for real, for real. He's right. protected me, he's nurtured me, he's helped me develop, right. he's protected me for a lot of stuff in the art, Right. you know, he's, he's kept me in, in line with a lot of aspects of my life, but since you, you've been there with him way longer. Yeah, as long, you know, way back when he used to wear the, 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 the big New Balances with the, with the skinny <laughs> sweatpants, like, you know, you know, I like to say at this moment, I love that man, yes, sir. you know, basically when everything was going on out here in the streets and my brothers wanted to run the streets he would make sure that I stayed in the dojo. Not that I, I didn't want to be there, but um, he made sure that um, I stayed on point, um, that I was training, and that I was doing things in my life that was constructive. Um, be yourself. Don't be anybody else. Matter of fact, he'll even tell you, don't even try to be me. He said, be yourself. Be the best version of yourself that you can actually be. And that's basically what he used to bring out of his students. But I would say Grandmaster Anthony, as far as a father figure, a man that taught me how to wear a suit, mm. when and where, that walk that I was imitating earlier, yes. he would show me like how, like, all right, this is how you get at somebody. Mm. You know, like, this is how you walk. Like, this is how you sidestep. Like, mm. you know, it wasn't no, 
Right. You know, it wasn't no, it was, it was, it was always, you know, strategic. And um, he gave me a great appreciation for knowing my environment, knowing people, um, having a love for family. Um, he wouldn't let anybody come and violate or get too close to the family or act like they wanted to violate the family. He was always like the first to step up. And um, he definitely pushed, despite whatever height, he definitely pushed everybody behind him. <laughs> That's cool.